I've been an archivist for many years and throughout all of those years my main priority has been trying to prove that archives are not these dusty, inaccessible, um, hidden collections that people tend to automatically associate the word with. Archivists and rare books librarians and all sorts of practitioners are working with these collections all the time. They're constantly trying to make them accessible, to bring in new audiences, to tell different stories with them, to unearth new narratives and to just bring out this whole fantastic uh, set of meanings and nuances that are within these collections. We designed Paper Trails as a space that researchers and information professionals could come together. Uh, the idea was to break down some of the barriers between cooperation, uh, between joint research interests, and to celebrate uh, what we call the social lives of archives and collections. And we were really uh, inspired by the work of uh, Antoinette Burton, uh, Arlette Farge, people like uh, Lisa Jardine. This concept of looking at archives as spaces of discovery, spaces of joy, and spaces of surprise. And I think that's really what we wanted to do with Paper Trails, to create new communities of learning and collaboration which celebrated the idea of the archive that sits at the heart of all our research. We organised a series of conferences in 2017 and 2019 but we didn't want to make these just normal academic conferences. Instead we designed two-day conferences in partnership with UCL Special Collections and Archives and what we paired with normal sort of academic papers was widening participation workshops with school children from local sixth form colleges. And we had speakers from the conference working in those workshops alongside archive professionals. Now they let us look at the material, take the ideas from the conferences and actually work on those in partnership in new communities of learning. We knew that as researchers we had as much to learn from information professionals and learners themselves in new types of environment. And that really inspired what we want to do with Paper Trails as a publication. We want to foster new communities for learning and collaboration across traditional divides, breaking down those barriers of prestige or hierarchies where we find them, instead to produce something which is open access, multi and pluridisciplinary, and offers us really interesting and exciting opportunities for new types of research. What we are really trying to do with Paper Trails um, is to joined together different audiences. It became really apparent when we were doing the conferences and the events where we pulled together academics and school children and collections that it was possible to create a, many different levels of access and many of different ways of interrogating these fantastic items um, that just didn't seem to happen in any other set of circumstances. So what we really wanted to do was try to recreate that in online and create a whole other platform where these very different types of approaches could come together and be complementary and work together to widen out the project as far as possible and to get as much different input into paper trails as we can. We've created four content streams. That is research stories, co-production, collection profiles and engagement. Some of the first moments uh, that made me think about what paper trails could be really came when I ordered a book in the post uh, from Toulouse. Uh, it was a second-hand book. Uh, it arrived after a, a good long period of time in an envelope festooned with stamps of Francis I, believe it or not. Uh, now, that book uh, is this one here. Um, it's a book by someone called Paul Mousse, uh, which is called Le Destin de l'Union Française, The Future of the French Union. Now, when this book arrived, um, I thought it was a good copy and I started to explore it. But what I found inside was, first of all, that the pages were uncut. And so, with a, a little bit of impromptu book surgery thereafter, I sort of literally unlocked the knowledge therein. Now, one of the things that fell out of that book when I did that was um, an old piece of marketing material, which, for me, recontextualised some of the work that I could actually do with it to start with. It was this piece of what we call belly wrap, a wrap marketing the uh, book to an immediate audience. And you can see there on the front it says Andochine and Afrique. Now the Andochine is scored through the end of French Empire in Indochina, which came with the fall of Dien Bien Phu and the Geneva Accords of 1954. That cross says this is the end, the question mark by Africa opens up that to a new audience, concerns, you know, uncertainty 
about what future lay in store for France's empire. Now, I think too often, that sort of story about how we encounter that knowledge is lost in the research we write up for publication. And I think that when we elide that sort of story, so often we elide the role of archivists, librarians, and special collections librarians, the people that help us encounter that knowledge for the first time. And so, with Paper Trails, we want to centre the idea of the research story. And I think that gives us an opportunity to reflect on our own research, how we encounter the material, and how that encounter shapes our own research outcomes. We've had some wonderful pieces published already in Paper Trails, which talk about Gilded Age detective stories of political scandal in the United States. Things which look at encountering um, ideas of oral history and recorded testimony in archives of the Troubles in Northern Ireland. Things which look at marriage contracts and reading between the lines in early modern Europe. These are important stories which are unlocked by reflecting on the way we encounter that material. For the practitioner part of Paper Trails, we've got two areas um, that they can submit papers to. So there is co-production and there is engagement. So in terms of co-production, what we're really looking at is um, non-academic audiences engaging with collections and other groups of people to create new content. So for example, we've got a brilliant piece of work where there was a year six school group in Sheffield that was looking at the Aliens Act and how the archival material from that um, linked into their environment in World War I and they created a play based on that. So for the engagement stream, um, what we're hoping to pull together is really reflective pieces and case studies by practitioners looking at how they engage with audiences outside of the academic. We've got a really fantastic uh, piece that's written about an after-school club called Illustrate um, that was with uh, 11 to 13 year olds really looking at medieval manuscripts and different ways of calligraphy and how those things all work together and really to inspire them to do their own artistic work. Um, we looked at that and we also did a research question around that, around well-being. One of the things they wanted to find out in that piece was whether the club was increasing the well-being of the children. Um, so it's a really fantastic piece of work that really emphasises how you can use archive and rare book collections for much more than academic research and really engage with audiences in completely different ways. With collection profiles what we really wanted to pull out is that moment when either you're teaching with something or you're using it for engagement and somebody just looks at you and just goes this is amazing, this is fantastic, why do more people know about this? And I'm really passionate about this collection profiles uh, opportunity because what it presents is really a moment when we can talk about collections which we may not have encountered yet, which people need to see, which people want to explore. And it allows us to talk about some of our favourite things that we find. And so we encourage both academics and information professionals to focus on what they are passionate about within their own collections and ones they have encountered. Personally, I took some of the models that I developed when we worked in the Paper Trails schools workshops and did a great amount of work with a local record office in West Sussex. After that, we've looked at a lot of really interesting collection profiles which say actually how great some of the material is in terms of addressing crucial global questions. We are always looking to explore what Lisa Jardine called temptation in the archives. So we want to be tempted. We want to hear from you. We are delighted to feature new collections, old collections, to feature research stories, co-production projects, or looking at how you engage others with archives and special collections. Please do get in touch. Paper Trails is a living book, and we want you to help us bring these archives and special collections to life.